I'll tell you that. All right, let's move on to the next one. Clemson assistant coach. Uh, Danny Pierman, I believe was the name, was accused and and then admitted to using a racial slur uh, on the practice field in 2017. Now, the situation was, and now he came out yesterday, he apologized. Um, you know, the story got around, it was DJ Greenlee that confirmed the account to the state newspaper in South Carolina. Uh, he, he said, Pierman, the tight ends and special teams coach, overheard players using the term, and then he repeated it himself. He said, it was just a heated argument during practice, basically. Uh, me and the coach got into it. I was speaking with one of my teammates. He heard me use the N-word, and he basically tried to correct me by saying the N-word back. Um, it, in the apology, I mean, he said, three years ago on the practice field, I made a grave mistake involving DJ Greenlee. I repeated a racial slur I overheard when trying to stop the word from being used on the practice field. What I overheard, I had no right to repeat. Uh, Pierman said the word was not directed at Greenlee. Uh, and then other players did agree that he did not call him that, yeah. anything like that. He was saying it and getting them to stop. Um, it, I will say this. The issue that, that I have here, and I think a lot of people, it's, it's that nothing was ever done about this. And I'm not saying like that he needed to be uh, disciplined or, or anything like that. It's, it's that this happened, and players were obviously visibly frustrated with it, and it was never brought up again. Addressed. S- yes, something yeah. like that would need to be addressed with the entire team because news like that, I'm kind of surprised that it took you know three years for it to come out. It, something like that, it feels like, to me, that would need to be a team meeting type of situation. Like, I agree. He, he shouldn't be apologizing to these players that aren't on the team anymore three years later. Yeah. Uh, and he, he did say that he apologized, and they all admitted, the players admitted that he apologized to them that were involved yeah. there. But once the word of that starts to get around, it feels like everybody should have been included on that, and it should have been addressed really almost immediately, like the next day at a you know the entire team meeting, whatever it is. It, tell me if I'm wrong here. Nope, I think you're right. I think you're right. And also, nobody, nobody enjoys crushing Clemson like I do. Okay. But this is this is not a situation where, a, you know, somebody used a word that they use in their private life, in the public life, and it slipped out, and now they're embarrassed and they got caught. You know, yeah. he, he shouldn't have repeated it. It's not our word to say. It's not our word to use. But – he, you know, he wasn't saying it in anger, and he was trying to stop it from being said on the field. And I understand that. I get that. Um, this is not one of the situations where I would have beaten that guy up too bad for it, but I absolutely would have wanted a conversation with with the players and the team immediately. That's that's a thing where, hey, this happened today, guys. I don't want you to hear from it from a rumor mill or anything else. I own it. I said it. I love you guys. I, 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 I was saying it in trying to say that I don't want this word said on the field. Yeah. So if you're around me, I can't speak for all the other coaching groups, but if you're in my coaching group or I can hear you, I'm not going to tolerate it. I'm sorry. I said it. I get it. You, what, what you're saying is, is, is what should have happened. It's weird that why would you bury something like this? I, it, I have the no person idea. I'm, well, I, I want I'll to take you. the shot at here is Dabo. But, right, and, and not because I like taking shots at Dabo, but you're the head of this. You knew it happened. You're the person. You're the only one that can call that meeting. You're the only one that can do that. It's why. Why do you not take the leadership and just say, "Look, guys, we're going to talk about this as a family. We're going to get it out there, and then we're going to bury it, and, and not, not bury it from the media or bury it from anybody else, but just it's over. We're going to bury done. the hatchet. We're going to move on. Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because it's an uncomfortable situation. It's an uncomfortable yeah, that's, conversation. That's part of, I understand, but uh, but that's that's why those conversations are not had is because they are uncomfortable. That's the only reason. Now people these should people be bigger than that. Don't just get paid large sums of money to win football games. Okay. Yeah. Parts of your job is hard. Parts of your job is having uncomfortable situations, uncomfortable conversations. I was 27 years old when I was the branch manager of of a security business here in Memphis. I had a lady that 
strictly because she didn't want to use the porta potty that was out there, would wear diapers to work, adult diapers, and go to the bathroom on herself. The other ladies that had to work with her complained constantly to me. I, I, 27 years old, had to call a 40 year old woman into my office and tell her, I'm sorry, ma'am, you can't crap on yourself all day and then stay in it. These people don't want to be around you and work with you. They're going to pull you off the site. Yeah. That's really hard to do. You have no idea the anxiety of trying to think about how that conversation is going to go. But that was my job, and I wasn't highly compensated, but it was part of the job. I'm so sick of the argument that this is hard. It's why these people don't want to do any of the things that are hard. Yeah. It really bothers me. Oh, it's, and it's my absurd. My core bothers me. It's, it is absolutely absurd. Uh, ben said Clemson is just a weird place. Damien said racism and hate need to stop, and these athletes like Drew Brees and coaches like Vic Fangio need to shut their mouths and do their jobs. Uh, the reason that this Clemson stuff came up, it was first publicized on Twitter by former walk-on wide receiver Kenyon Tuttle, who responded to Clemson Athletics' tweet calling for solidarity with the recollection of the event and the lack of consequences for Pierman. He said, you allowed a coach to call a player the N-word during practice with no repercussions, uh, not even a team apology. When we had the sit-in in front of Sykes Hall, you suggested us players try to stay out of it to limit distractions. Stop protecting your brand. Take a stand. And, again, Pierman and Greenlee both said Pierman apologized after he discussed the incident with Sweeney, but there, there was no team meeting. So when stuff like I have, that gets I have a around, bigger problem with them telling the players they can't have the sit-in. I yeah, have a that's bigger a problem with, with Clemson coaches telling these young black men that are athletes that are working for free for them, by the way, to make their millions of dollars, all right? They're taking their scholarship as compensation while Dabo lives in a castle with a moat, okay? Then, and, 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 and they're saying, no, y'all, y'all don't have a voice here. We're the only voice that's here. But yet when it comes to hard conversations, I don't want to have a voice. I'm sorry. It was a really hard conversation to have, so I didn't want to do it. Yeah. It's it's, it's, just, bullshit. it's just bullshit. It's all it is. And yeah. it really bothers me. Yeah, I uh, I agree. I, how that didn't happen, and, and I don't know what could possibly come out of this. I mean, who knows? It, it appears that it's something that, that is just going to broaden the conversation. But who knows? And I don't know that there's anything that, that should necessarily happen to the coaching staff. But the, the thing that's going to come out of this is those coaches are going to be put in the locker next time they're, they they tell players you don't have a voice to protest. Yeah. No, you've lost your voice to tell us what's right and what's wrong morally when it comes to racial issues. Because every time you have an opportunity to do something good, you use your voice to do something bad. Yes. Yes. You're right. 